Hey there everybody, Sage Popham here, founder of the School of Evolutionary Herbalism. And in this week's episode here on the channel, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about herbal formulation. And I got a question this week from a student about, you know, what's the best number of herbs to put in a formula, right? Is there a too few or too many? Uh, what's the best way to think through uh, combining herbal pairs, combining formulas? What are some of the different approaches to formulation and how to do it strategically? And so there's you know a lot of different schools uh, in terms of how to approach putting together herbal formulas from you know the very simple formulas that we see in uh, traditional Western herbalism to some the very complex, many, many, many dozens of dozens of dozens of herbs in a single formula that we see in Chinese medicine, in Ayurveda. Um, and so what's, is there a right and a wrong? Is there a better or a worse? Uh, that's really the topic of discussion in this week's post. And I think this is something that's really important to talk about because one thing that I've noticed in a lot of herbal texts is that we'll see, you know, uh, here's a formula for this condition, or here's a formula for this organ system, or here's a formula for this, that, or the other. And while that's really great and can be very helpful, um, what, what I don't find too often is really discussions on like, hey, here's the fundamental principles of formulation. Here's how to think through putting a formula together strategically and intelligently so that it will be effective. And that's really what I wanna discuss uh, in response to this question I got this week is really looking at what are some of the some of the high level strategic approaches that you want to take to formulation because it is so much more than just throwing a bunch of herbs into a bottle and hoping that it'll work right there's a lot of thought uh, that goes behind a very uh, effective herbal formula so hopefully uh, you learned something good from this week's post and i hope you enjoy this discussion on herbal formulation Okay, question number three here from Soana Pierrette. Um, okay, Soana is asking, what's the best way to pair herbal blends? Should blends stay around three or six blends? Is it best to do more herbs or less in a formula blend? Okay, great question on formulation here, Soana. So, you know, there's definitely very different schools of thought on formulation, and I'm not sure any is right or wrong. I think it really is a matter of personal preference in terms of how one uh, approaches formulation. And there's also very different traditions around this. Um, for example, when we look at Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine, you will see absolutely massive herbal, herbal formulas, right? I mean, we're talking sometimes 20, 30, 40, 50 herbs in one formula. Um, you know, uh, there's whole methods of formulation in Chinese medicine where, you know, they're taking base formulas and, you know, putting formulas together of other formulas. And so the herb number can stack up really quickly uh, in, compounds like that. Conversely, in Western herbalism, it's much more common to see, I would say, smaller formulas. Most Western herbalists that I know uh, tend to keep their formulas relatively tight. Um, you know, um, some will stick with sometimes very simple just pairs or triplets. Some will do more complex formulas up to, you know, personally, I try to keep my formulas around seven herbs. Um, I tend to do three, five, or seven herbs in a formula. That's just my weird numerical symmetrical way of thinking um, that, you know, some people find a little too rigid. That's just the way I like to approach things. I know a lot of herbalists that will do 12, 13, up to 20 herbs in a formula. Uh, it, I think it really is uh, all about your personal preference. Uh, I think the key thing here, though, is that your remedy selection is done strategically, right? That each plant in that formula is serving a very specific function on its own, and yet at the same time is 
is synergizing with the other remedies in that formula to fulfill a, a whole kind of net goal of what that formula is trying to do. And so I think it's really important that the, the remedies in a formula aren't just selected kind of willy-nilly. Uh, you know, it's really common for beginning herbalists when making formulas to say, oh, I want to make a cough formula. Okay, well, the type of action that is good for a cough are the expectorants. And so maybe we go to the expectorant category in an herb book and see a big list of herbs and then just start picking herbs you know, maybe at random, well, we'll do a little this, a little this, a little this, a little that, a little this, a little that, and a little bit of the kitchen sink for good measure. And uh, and formulas like that oftentimes aren't f quite focused enough, and they sometimes just don't work, or they don't work as well as they could work, or in the worst case scenario, they actually could potentially aggravate whatever it is that you're trying to treat. And so I think it's very important that we select remedies that you know, obviously match the organ system we're trying to treat, that they have the, the actions of, um, excuse me, the physiological actions that we're trying to, you know, that we want to be present to heal that person, as well as that the, the energetics are matching for the tissue state of that person, the constitution of the person, uh, and, the, and the condition as well. So we want to make sure that it's uh, lined up in that way. And so when you're looking at the formula, you can see, okay, looking at all these herbs, okay, it's covering all my main actions. It's covering all my main organ affinities. And then the net energetic of the formula is going to be, you know, warming and drying if we need that for a cold, damp person or condition. <clears throat> so I think that's very important. It's also good to look at things like, oh, what types of synergists do we need? Um, what type, do we need any drivers? Are there any other secondary actions or organ systems that need to be supported um, in the pursuit of healing a person? Um, so, yeah, and then the kind of the first part of your question, what's the best way to pair herbal blends? And I'm just gonna say pairing herbs together. Um, you know, I think, the, I mean, all good formulators, to me, really understand the dynamics of pairing herbs. And I think that's one of the best ways, actually, to just approach studying plants, is that when you're studying a single medicinal plant, maybe start thinking, oh, what, wh how might I add one other herb to this herb in order to augment its effects or bring out a certain effect? or balance a certain effect. So I think there's different approaches to why you pair herbs together. So let me see if I can come up with an example off the top of my head. Well, I was using expectorants as an example. Um, so like take OSHA for example, right? OSHA is an excellent stimulant expectorant. Um, it's very warming, it's very drying. Um, it's got some spasmolytic properties in the bronchial tree. Um, it does drive blood a little bit, it's stimulant, um, and it d definitely has some antiviral properties, right? That's just like super quick, very basic overview of OSHA. Well, we could pair OSHA with something like Lamatium, which has similar properties, right? Lamatium, they're related, they're in the same family. Um, Lamatium has all those same properties as OSHA. Goes a little deeper in the lungs. Uh, it's a little more acrid in its flavor, a little more bitter in its flavor, but definitely very antiviral, stimulant expectorant, warming, drying, very resinous, very pungent. And th those two synergize. They have a similar effect. Like OSHA with Lamatium is more powerful than Lamatium on its own or OSHA on its own, right? That's one kind of pair. You could also put OSHA with something like licorice root, and that's a totally different pair, right? And whereas before we were going for kind of complementary effects or similar effects, here we're actually going for opposing effects or balancing effects, where OSHA on its own is very warming and very drying. Licorice is nice and moistening and can help to balance that drying effect of the OSHA. And so they're used together um, to balance one another out. Now there is some synergy there too where licorice has some antiviral properties as well. Um, but 
I'm just sharing that to kind of paint a picture of you have like similar effects to bring out and kind of add on to one another and you have another pairing technique where you are actually looking at oh where is this plant maybe excessive or maybe deficient and let's let's combine another herb to balance that plant out to make it a little bit more suitable for more people right or for maybe less extreme tissue state patterns and things like that whereas you take something like osha and lobelia very different pair right with lobelia we're getting a much stronger spasmolytic effect we're dilating and opening the bronchioles um, whereas osha is bringing a nice expectorant property lobelia is just going to help to open everything up relax tension constriction spasm uh, very very different right so osha and lamatium osha and licorice osha and lobelia three very different types of formulas, right? They all feature OSHA, but they're all doing very different things. They're doing similar things, right? Obviously, because they all have OSHA in them. But I think that's a really good way to think through herbal pairs. So when you're studying a single plant, think through, oh, what other herbs would you pair with that herb? Uh, and that's just a really great way to start building your knowledge of Materia Medica to start thinking through uh, formulation strategies and what plants might synergize very well with that single herb. And to me, I think that's one of the best ways to start building kind of your skills and knowledge and formulation. Now, obviously, it's, I think, very important to actually experiment with maybe putting small amounts of those herbs together and trying it out. How does it feel? And experience the effect of that. What does 50-50 OSHA and licorice feel like? What does 75% OSHA, 25% licorice feel like? What does 25% OSHA, 75% licorice feel like? Like get a sense for the ratios as well, because again, another detail, those ratios really change the effect. So, I mean, formulation's literally infinite. I think that's why people get really overwhelmed and possibly confused with formulation. Uh, I, I think it doesn't really help that there isn't really, I don't really feel like there's a great book out there that really lays down kind of uh, big picture like principles of formulation. There's lots of books out there that just give you formulas like or go through organ systems. Here's some formulas. Here's what they're used for. But I, I don't really see too many texts that really are like, okay, here's the principles. Here's the foundations. Here's the strategy for how to develop your own herbal formulas. So um, I think that is a little bit of a lack in, in herbal literature. Um, so yeah, and as far as, is it best to do more herbs or less in a formula blend? Again, that's personal preference. My personal preference is I really like to have larger amounts of lesser herbs. Um, just because I feel like if you choose the right remedies, if you choose specific remedies, you can usually achieve what you're trying to achieve with a small handful of plants. And you know that you're getting a, a solid amount of each of those plants to have their unique effect. Um, so that's kind of my boat. Whereas, you know, you get into 20, 30, 50, 50 herb formulas, you know, some of those herbs, you're maybe getting 1% of the formula is that plant or a bunch of remedies of 5% of that formula, very small amounts. Now, obviously at that point, you're really going for the synergistic effect. You're, you're not necessarily looking at each individual so much as you are the net effect of the formula as a whole. And I mean, obviously you're always doing that with formulation, but to me, if, if I'm working with someone and I can find, you know, three herbs, five herbs that are really, really specific to them and covers all the, as I said earlier, all the organ systems, all of the uh, actions that I want that formula to have. And then from there, maybe there's a couple synergists I wanna throw in there. Okay, maybe I need to adjust the energetics a little bit. Maybe I need to moisten it up. Maybe I need to warm it up. Maybe I wanna drive that formula deeper into that organ system. So maybe we'll add a couple herbs to you know, drive blood flow or open things up a little more. Um, that's kind of my way of thinking it through. Again, uh, some might disagree with that approach. That's totally fine. Um, I think 
the end result is the most important part of formulation, right? It doesn't really matter how we get there as long as the person gets healed, that's the most important thing. So many paths to the top of the mountain. So great question there, Soana, and uh, hopefully that answered your question.